Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the lunch. I hope you also had a coffee. Or, well, if you want to sleep, then, well, just don't snore, please. So my talk, Chefing a Department, One Dev at a Time, uh, the title actually stayed. I, I just came back from Geekon where a few people, at least a few people, submitted talks, and then the abstract went one way, the actual talk went a different way. But a few details about me. I have a Twitter, I have an email, I have a blog, which I don't write to very regularly. I happen to work at eBay. If you would like to talk more about that, catch me after. Uh, some things I'm proud of that I'm involved and organizing, actually, is Polish Java User Group, a conference called Geekon, uh, Software Craftsmanship Krakow, and together with Marcin, because he gets a lot of shout-outs today, uh, Krakow Hadoop User Group, which now is called Krakow Data, well, Big Data something. Anyway, uh, what, who am I? I'm, I would call myself a, a dev going deeper. So I started, well, I, I, I am a developer, but I was interested what happens below what I'm doing, and then what happens well, one level, one level below that. And then one le level after level, I ended up actually, well, playing with, with operating systems because, well, people started to be afraid of that. And since they were afraid and I was not, I got to do systems, which was, yes, a developer doing infrastructure, all kind of madness. But luckily, well, people, nobody died, or at least I don't know about it. And I enjoyed it. So I started playing with both things. So you could call it DevOps. I don't, out of respect to people who actually claim to know what this is and do that. So, because we need memes, of course. Uh, a few disclaimers. Uh, first of all, my opinions are my own. I do not represent any company in particular. Uh, I hate computers, uh, and sometimes I, I, I do the same to people, and then I stick to computers, and then if I hate both at the same time, I have a problem. If you have any questions, just wave your hand. I will not be able to see that because of this, well, very bright light, but luckily and hopefully our helpers will be able to catch that. Uh, tweet, give me some feedback, because if you don't give me feedback, I have no idea if you are, uh, liked it or didn't. If you're already sleepy, as I said, there is a too long didn't read or didn't l really listen. Uh, first of all, the only bit of Polish that you have to have in here, sorry, I, uh, I cannot translate that properly into English, but the bottom line, just, well, teach people around you about the things that you want to do and how to do the, that properly, and ignore the reality. Either it adapts or you move on. Uh, there is one awesome book that offers a lot of mind tricks, if you are not a Jedi already, about how to introduce change into organization, how to convince people and convert them to follow your ideas. It's by Linda Rising. It's Quite interesting, also very thin, which means it's packed with ideas and does a good reading for an evening. So, a bit of background about, well, how this talk actually started. Uh, I joined eBay a year and, well, February last year. I was, sh sh well, taken out of Poland. Uh, we're starting a new department. We need people who actually know a bit more than Java. Uh, maybe you'd like to come along. Yes, it sounds nice. We met a few times. I was being flown back and forth. It sounded really interesting. It, I was really into it. It sounded like a really cool thing to do. So we had a bunch of new developers. We were trying to do software. Uh, so what did we do? Well, of course, we started to use Chef Auto, uh, just like that. Why? Because we wanted kick us people. Well, not really. Uh, reality. Business-driven reality was that we needed a prod and we wanted it quickly because waterfall is really not, it's kind of meh now. So out of all things available to me as, as a developer, most of them seemed broken. So we had to do our own prod. It's going to be fun, so at least we can automate it. Let's follow this cool infrastructure as code approach. And I believe that you are aware of what infrastructure as code means. If you are not, just write it down and either Google this, or if you are not really into Googling, you are probably good enough to talk yourself out of, a, out of any other real work to go to more conferences, so you'll be, you'll be covered. Uh, why infrastructure as code? Why, why Chef or a tool like that? Well, because Bash scales well, as somebody said. That's my answer. Uh, no, it doesn't. There are a few problems with, with scaling Bash. Uh, Talk to me after if you want which ones we hit. Uh, also, protein or human-based inter interfaces scale really well. If you need another person understanding your system, you just wait 25 years, 
done, have it. So, of course, this approach doesn't really work. So, what can we do differently? Well, it's very simple. Use another meme to get uh, an automated infrastructure. Automated as in do as little things as, uh, as you need because then things will do work automatically. You don't have to worry about things. And in case of this, you're kind of covered. Kind of because if all your servers everywhere in single, every single location burned, then well, probably you are screwed. But if it's only a single data center or, or a percentage, then well, nothing, it's not so bad. So, well, we ended up using a tool called Chef. Who here has heard of, has used, or well, just knows what Chef is? So I can see half of the room raising their hands. Probably that's correct, or I might be blunt. Anyway, th those are not these guys. If you think Chef, this is, it's that? No, it's not. Sorry. Uh, I'm talking about a tool by a company that at least used to be called Opscode. They might have renamed themselves to Chef Incorporated, uh, or maybe they will. Uh, and we went with Chef. You could, of course, ask why didn't we go with Puppet or something else or something else. Uh, it's actually, it was actually a quite selfish decision by me. I've used Puppet before, and I've used Chef before. Out of the two, I thought Chef would be easier to teach people about because you at least uh, kind of understand the order that things get executed. And it seemed pretty nice and well, well supported and also very mature. Uh, so what does Chef look like? Why? W what is this infrastructure as code? Because, well, half of you only raise the hands. Uh, if you get infrastructure as code, you get, well, code is basically easy to read, easy to version. It is some sort of a DSL explaining things. This is an example. Let it well speak for itself. It's, to me, that's, that's pretty much understandable, probably much better than apt-get install and then some funky sets, orgs, what have you. Good thing about Chef is that it abstracts systems away a bit, allows you to write less to get more, and then you can apply this to number of machines, even if the operating systems change, if everything is well properly wired up. To sum this up quickly, you put resources together, you make recipes out of them, you organize that into roles, you apply roles to machines, well, done problem solved, you re repeat that machine after a machine after a machine, your whole fleet kind of works. There is a problem, or well, not really a problem, but there is a lot of chef on the in, in the internet. Uh, because there is really a lot of this on GitHub, some people think that if something comes from GitHub, especially from uh, the, well, it looks official because it's from from the Opscode repository. It will obviously be a, a good situation uh, for us to use it because it comes from Opscode, so it cannot be cannot be wrong. But let's come back to the wh where 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 I. What was the situation? So those were developers doing infrastructure. Those were, this is a new development department, and it was located in London, Zurich, and Berlin at the same time. So you have something between fifth, well, 50 and 100 people trying to learn a new tool, trying to orchestrate their own servers uh, using a, a tool written in, well, mo bits of that, at least the bits that you interact with are, are in Ruby, and those are primarily Java-focused people, so you can probably imagine there are some problems. So introducing them to a tool was a painful process, so that's actually what this talk tries to be about. So. What could possibly go wrong? First of all, first of all, it, it's not easy. Developers, well, classical developers, especially th those of the Java kind, do not really understand what happens later in, in your system. Uh, it still isn't easy. If the, even after the, uh, a few months, because we started over a year ago, people still make mistakes. You have to carefully review a lot of things. It's a difficult pro project. And well, the reality is, as I said, first of all, uh, what do you mean system, well, a server beyond the Tomcat or whatever your, your container is, or a server beyond Node if somebody was uh, doing front-end? Uh, there is a silent assumption that in Java, servers just happen, you deploy a WAR file. Unfortunately, that's not, well, that is only half of the truth. Uh, so 
there are there are there are solutions to that. One of the solutions that's available in my company is there is a platform as a service available. You can use it, but to actually get to deployed to that at the time was was really really painful. And to be in order to be able to run there, you had to your application had to look in a, a certain direction. Of course, uh, any sort of normal developer would like to do an application that actually performs some business well, does something rather than looks the correct way and then look at what should we actually do. So we had to, first of all, teach Java developers how to, what is this, well, what's the goal? What, what problems you can get? Then get through this stage of whatever comes from the internet is actually correct. Well, it's not. It takes some time. Uh, the, biggest, the biggest challenge there is, uh, at least the biggest challenge for me was, okay, We've, we have a single goal, we, have, uh, we actually share this goal. We want to do things properly. They actually fell for that mindset uh, pretty quickly, but they were very eager to get random things from GitHub, put it into our repo, uh, and just see uh, if it works. Most of the, of the times it didn't. So I had to think about, okay, what, I'm, what, what am I really doing? How am I doing that? I had to take a step back, make a few decisions. Why me? Because I seemed like the most knowledgeable person around that. The first key idea is you have to keep things simple. So if you get, if you have opportunities to do things less or in a mo more or less complicated way, go for the extremely s slim, uh, the, well, the, the smallest problem that you want to fix, go after only this one. So a tiny problem, first of all, in the very beginning of, of, of life there is Ruby but why am I going to code in Ruby? How am I going to code in that? Because I write Java, I was hired to do Java, I'm scared. Mom or anybody else help me. Uh, quickly, really quickly, with help of people who were doing Python or some PHP guys, they, we got around this, people got around Ruby really, really quickly, especially those who were doing JavaScript. And then it turned out Things will be looking fine because they more or less understand well, how you do things, how you can iterate over collections, how you can well, how templates work. It's all pretty simple. Uh, nothing really fancy, just a different language. Especially after we introduced them to unit testing, yeah, exactly what we what we wanted, what they are used to. That works really well. Another decision that we had to make was: should we do Chef Server? Should we do Chef Solo? Well. The answer, of course, normally would be it depends. For us, for me, it was why not Chef Server? Uh, that's the reason. Uh, think we, if, if in our reality, uh, there were th that was a single shared repository of all the cookbooks in the department. So I didn't want one person that makes a commit that. Is, is, is basically broken to break uh, all the machines for everybody. So we make we made it. We kept it really simple so that whoever makes commits can, uh, well, will try it. We'll see if it works. But even if they make a, well, a, a silly mistake or a big mistake, they will not break everybody else's machines. That seemed, that worked out pretty well. In the, ver in the beginning of the project, it went, it seemed like it, it was the correct decision. Right now, uh, we are experimenting with doing it, in a, in, with using a chef server. It seems to work. Uh, people now have more experience, they, they know what they are doing, or they seem they, they know what they're doing, so it works much better. Uh, an essential thing about wh while doing that was doing code reviews. Uh, every single commit that was being done had to be reviewed. At first, by me, of course, I was a single point of failure there because I don't really scale. So first, we started using a, a tool called Review Kiwi because it sends you all the commits as emails. Uh, and then after getting, well, a few people felt really familiar with the tool, they started helping with, with reviewing and it actually started to live a, a life of, of, of its own without me having to oversee absolutely everything. That took some months. Yes, I probably should have done this faster, train a few people who actually to be the, well, the masters or well, my lieutenants or whatever you would call that. But well, yes, that's a that's about th that's a story about what actually happened. There is a thing in Chef that I at least call dual execution. So your model 
has to be materialized in memory and then it gets applied. This is something that's a, that's a source of infinite amount of problems for us. Unfortunately, we haven't found a solution around this. As far as I know, there is no, there, there is no really good solution to except for accepting that life looks like this and understanding and, and testing extensively using, well, chef zeros and other things that were mentioned today in the morning. Uh, and then, well, the biggest problem of all, people. I tend to say that few, only, few, uh, only a few of us are actually dealing with difficult technical problems. Most of the problems that are we are dealing with on a daily basis are, well, people problems. So there was a funny case about a developer walking up to me, uh, trying to have an argument about, well, I'm trying to do something and you re either rejected my commit or the reverted it by doing a push minus force or something is, is wrong. And w come on, I'm a developer in, in here and you're a developer, so our chefs are considered equal because we are the same kind of developers. Well, it only happened that I've been doing it for a bit longer. So I first, I of course wanted to correct them, tell them how to do well things my way. I, I do, dare not say properly. Uh, what I had to accept was you have to let them do mistakes. And it's really, really tough. And wh when they do mistakes, of course, it will take a week for them to realize that what you want, what you are trying to sell, the idea, the, the, the way of implementing things might be working, but they have to build trust and they have to get to accept that you're not their enemy. You're, it's not a race, it's about getting to a common goal. Unfortunately, some of the people interacting with more business-oriented people have this rat race mentality, and that's sad. So they, want, they think that you're trying to be their enemy by pointing out their mistakes and their, their problems and, well, point things out to, their, that, to them that they are doing wrong. There is a trick that I've used that worked pretty well, which is, well, doing food. So somebody is walking up to you, uh, they want to well fix things or review something and uh, well just generally look at things. Uh, bring in a muffin, bring, bring in a cupcake. It has to be sweet. And there is actual science behind it because when you're, first of all, uh, on a base human level, if you're doing food with, if you're eating with somebody, you form a bond. That's already a plus. And then if you're actually eating sweet, something that's sweet, then uh, Sweet things make you happy. If you're doing work and that gives you, it's connected with eating sweet things, your brain will not be able to make a difference between work happening here and a sweet thing, well, it just happens to, be, to happen at the same time. So working and reviewing and fixing things will, will be considered an activity that's not painful, that's actually quite pleasant and people started to look forward to this. This very simple trick made all the difference because some people were really, really stubborn about doing things their way, doing things their own way, uh, without having a, a, a real reason. But and this trick comes from the book that I mentioned in the in the beginning, so it it was useful. It is still useful, and that works. One tool that saved us a lot of times was Vagrant. Are you using Vagrant? Just raise your hands. Yeah. So if you're not using Vagrant, just give it a try. Uh, why did we use Vagrant? Because uh, it allows us to test our cookbooks on, a on, on the very machine that we are using and do it in a matter of a few minutes. And then you can log in and play with the machine, see what's wrong, see what's not wrong, and repeat the whole process in a few times. Do it for a few, few more machines and repeat that locally without affecting anybody. And it's also better for, well, personal pride reasons if what you just pushed doesn't have to be immediately fixed, wi well, followed by a co commit that fixes typos or, or things. Of course, sometimes we all avoid that, but still Vagrant allowed for a lot of testing that helped us move forward a lot. It's, it's a lovely tool, works very well on Windows. I have no idea because I don't use it, but we, we live on OS X and on Linux, so that's awesome. Now, this is a phoenix. There is no bird involved, so if you're after Eurovision singers, that's not the one. Uh, I'm talking about the, well, the, something called the phoenix pattern, sometimes also referred to as disposable servers. So if something on a server went bad or didn't really work, then 
don't log in, don't fix it. Well, bake a new box and be, well, be happy. Uh, that was particularly difficult to sell to people. Well, you might ask why, because it's, it's only, I, I know what's wrong, it's only a very dis well, simple single change, I will fix it. Well, first of all, somebody will forget to apply a, a proper commit to, to the repo, so we will, in case it happens again, we will have a problem. Then, if, anyf if anything went wrong and you were under stress or, well, not really, well, the real issue will turn out to be something different, you might break even more stuff, and that's, that's not awesome. So, a trick that worked was kind of breaking, uh, being, uh, being able to log into machines after the, they've been baked, except for, well, a set of credentials that people had access to but forgot. Uh, this helped a lot because people started to use Vagrant because they wanted to have a machine and they just wanted to switch the machine that was doing things to, 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 the, one, to the new one that was actually working properly. Uh, at first, again, of course, there was resistance when people learned about that it's actually broken by, uh, by design. They were angry a bit, but nothing bad happens to me and uh, sweet help. And then they were pretty happy that it actually turned out to be done this way because, well, in the end they learned and things got better. So right now uh, we have, well, a department running Chef for all our, well, tests, staging, boxes. I, I, unfortunately, I cannot say that we run chefs for, for all, all of our productions because there, is, there are corporate powers and politics in play uh, are, where, where I work and some people prefer to be on the mentioned platform as a service solution. Some people would prefer to run their own prod and not, really, not, not a lot of people understand what's, what's really good, uh, which, thi which way thi things should go, which way should we do things. Should we actually follow the what San, San Jose offers, or should we do things on our well European way? Uh, so the question is, wh what do we do with all those chefs now? And then it turned out that well, QAs, QEs uh, came to the rescue. I say QA slash QE because I have no idea what the proper acronym for them is. Well, people who actually test and write code to. Uh, break the applications that we write in an automated fashion. Those are not manual or clicky testers. Those are, well, automated testers. They also code they are proper geeks. And they are awesome. And they, were, they are, were actually the people who came up with the idea of, uh, OK, maybe we are at the level of doing Chef Server. I was a bit reluctant. So they started it. They, they launched it. They then came, they came, in, came in for help. and. This, we started working together quite regularly because if you've listened to the mobile first talk, well, actually for eBay, it's mobile first. Uh, the author of Cell Android used to work for eBay until very recently. The guy that does iOS driver for Selenium works for eBay. And we care about testing things for on mobile heavily. We have uh, well, a lot of tests running there. We have a well, walls of devices. We have a lot of devices everywhere. All of the conference rooms uh, have tablets and phones lying around for you to play with, well, your creations, your ideas, on the, so that you can see them on mobile. So for us, mobile is uh, a very important thing. And that means that if you want to do mobile well, you have to be able to test on mobile. In order to be able to test on mobile, of course, protein and, well, human-based interfaces don't really scale, so you have to automate. How do you want to automate? Well, we use Chef. We, we are happy with this. Uh, once we figure out some way of deploying, which usually for mobile websites is, well, there is, it's nothing fancy, uh, we know what to do. So moving on, uh, bottom line of what I wanted to say is, well, mostly people are the complex element of, of the puzzle in most of the cases. We were trying to keep it simple, do things, well, then there has to happen the magic thing that might be different for your organization. You never know what it actually is. And then, if all goes well and time passes, you can profit. For us, this means that, by pro what I do I mean by profit? That uh, once we had interest, well, infrastructure and a set of cookbooks that people were sharing, you could in we started introducing new things like moni adding monitoring tools to, to, the, to the servers, uh, working on our deployments, improving them gradually, and 
all those things would happen by themselves because people would use it. You, you, we had the infrastructure baked. We had uh, infrastructure that people would use for all the applications. And they were, they, well, they are very, very happy with, about this. And, well, it works. I'm, I'm quite proud of that. Uh, problems, as I said, politics, they kind of, they, they interrupt a lot. And some people are not fully supportive of the idea. They, they, they still are not because, for example, if you have a Windows user or a fanatic Windows user or somebody that wants to touch a box under the desk and they like touching the box under the desk because that makes them indispensable, then sorry, well, what can you do about this? Well, we avoided the problem completely. We didn't want to educate all the people. We waited for them. Well, this guys, during the few months that you were not playing with us, we actually made a lot of progress doing this, 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 and that. And now if you want to, well, fix your, well, let's say virtual box-based Jenkins infrastructure, we, we don't know how to fix it, but we can offer you, well, this way of doing it properly with having uh, Selenium b baked in and mobile testing facilities. And that actually went on pretty well in the end. At first, there was resistance. During the process, there was resistance. There were fights boring, sad corporate fights, unfortunately. Now it goes on pretty well. Well, right now I have no idea because I'm not there, but before I left, it was it, it, it was all okay. Uh, big steps for us is for the future, probably going Chef Server, probably while well trying more about looking, taking more care about testing, testing more and more and more cookbooks, because some of the cookbooks we have written are very, very simple and don't really have tests because we wanted to get things rolling. And that, I think, brings me to the end. So thank you. If you have any questions, just well raise your hands. <laughs> or catch me after. I can see Martin having a question. But there is somebody behind. But there is Vladimir first. And my first question is, uh, if you have uh, developers uh, doing infrastructure, uh -huh. so what are doing all the people that was doing infrastructure before? Uh, as you can imagine, this being a big organization, well, they, they, they still are there. We are only a, uh, well, a, 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 well, let's say a 60 people department in an organization that has at least uh, a thousand of technical people. And they are still supporting most of the applications that are, that are out there. And for us, uh, Part of our our infra code being in, in, a, in, in a single chef repository is that well they can have a look they can have their input they can put all, put in all the fancy switches they want they can well if they want to do sys, sys controls they can and they do and they uh, the parts that we care about we we can we can express in there and it's all versioned. Uh, but so uh, I'm asking, do you? Uh, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, do you choose the bare metal? Do you choose how m how many processors or storage you you need on server, or you just uh, doing the DevOps doing developers doing infrastructure? So you have some boxes that are going from you know from heaven, and you just those are those are VMs. You can choose the well the power of the VM, mm -hmm. uh, and they come from an elastic well uh, fr fr from a cloud like well from our private cloud. So you, you can just re request more more VMs to, to happen and they will happen. We don't Does do that. Does it have any, any impact on your budget uh, in IT? As of now, uh, I am not aware of anybody complaining about this. Maybe because there is no billing set up, maybe because other reasons, but mm -hmm. we don't. Okay. So we can, requ we, we can request as many VMs as we, as we wish. Um, okay. So uh, you said that you guys started with Chef Solo, which is a fine start, uh, but you didn't say much about the scale. And uh, my question is, uh, how do you distribute the cookbooks for the Chef Solo deployments? So it is a very basic solution. Uh, we do, when somebody wants to bake a machine, they bake it. When somebody wants to upgrade a machine, they just well run those cookbooks ag uh, against it again. Or if they want to have Newer machines, they they create newer machines and then they move to the newer machines. Usually, gradually, that there there is some manual process involved. Unfortunately, it's it's not a perfect thing. Uh, about the scale, it's up to I would say up to 20 boxes per project. There, it's nothing really 
Facebook scale is nothing really massive. It's, I would say, quite small, but this allowed us to learn and, 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 and to move forward. It, we are not doing the core eBay platform. We are doing projects that sit well, around it or can be served out of, out of those boxes. Um, so, uh, follow-up question to Martin's question. Does that mean that if somebody doesn't take uh, some sort of active ac action, that all of their boxes are just bit rot? That sounds aggressive. I didn't mean it that no, way. No, no, like no, no. It doesn't sound like ag aggressive. They don't really rot because they they will be. We will get warnings that they have not been touched in in, in some time. At least that that part we have. So that it's. It's pretty. Uh, it's a bit naive. Yes. So if somebody really doesn't do anything, yes, they they, they will rot and they will be old and not touched and sudden uh, and unloved. Okay. Uh, you said hi. Ah, hi. Yeah. Uh, you said you've got mm, developers, Java programmers, writing cookbooks in Ruby, uh, Turing complete language. So uh, you've got infrastructure as code, as in really code running with libraries and so on. How do you keep uh, your cookbooks simple? Uh, first of all, we, we keep everything on master. We don't really use versions. Uh, we try to do code reviews to all the cookbooks that get, get written. So, and, and we pair program a lot. So that means that all the, there is a, usually there are a few people involved in every, every change that gets done. Yeah, but... Mm, do you have uh, mm, then? Do you feel a, f uh, a force that uh, you know, programmers uh, tend to you know, do things in abstract and uh, theoretically pretty way compared to sysadmins who just do the simplest things that could possibly work, even if it's ugly? So, uh, do uh, do actually s so far it works for us. Sorry for interrupting you. Yeah, it, sure. it, it works for us pretty well. People don't really want to build bu well cook out solutions that will, will cover all the possible login cases, probably because they, do, they, maybe it's because they don't know or maybe because they don't care, but they want to get, usually uh, they're after the simplest thing that would get them the, to, to the desired point. So if they want uh, a config file somewhere, they will probably well use the right thing. It, so far, it, it, we are pretty happy with, with, with how it's going. Okay, also have you heard of a tool called Ansible? Yes. Okay, it's got a way simpler mental model than Chef. Uh, yes, but I, as, as I said, the decision, uh, at well, the beginning of the decision came from me. I didn't mm -hmm. know Ansible. I, I, I was pretty familiar, well, a bit familiar with Chev and Puppet uh, at the time when I was choosing. So we, st we just started with, with Chef because we needed an environment and we, ch we stuck with it. Okay, thanks. I can see you. Okay. Uh, how do you test your OS SIPs? You talked about using uh, Vagrant, but it's manual testing and humans are errors. So, uh, first of all, we, we, we try to do chef spec. Uh, we try to do one, one of the lint tools that, uh, that name escapes me at the moment. Huh? Food Critic. Yeah, Food Critic. We, we do Food Critic. Uh, we review it. Uh, well, const we do everything using per programming. That that helps a lot. But then, in the end, the ultimate test is when you actually try to apply things to a machine. That's why I mentioned Vagrant because it it still is uh, the biggest so sort of uh, the biggest source of surprises and big well the al the most helpful tool in our our pipeline. We tried doing uh, Jenkins driven tests, but abandoned the idea because of well. We had other things to, to go after, more, more I would call more, more fiery things to go after. Uh, so far, uh, a, a lint tool plus having a few tests covers, uh, well, g gets a lot of error, er errors or mistakes that we would go after, and then Vagrant catches most of what would remain. Okay. It's not well, perfect. I'm not, I'm not claiming that it's perfect. It's, well. I have same situation, so that's, that's why I'm asking. We can probably talk uh, in more okay. details about uh, after. Okay, if there are no any other questions, I would like to thank you very much, Andrzej. Big applause. <laughs>